This lesson is going to focus on classifying quadrilaterals. And first of all, I just want to highlight that a quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. Any figure with four sides is a quadrilateral. Now, there are three specific types that we're going to go into. And that is the kite, the trapezoid, and the parallelogram. If you can't classify a four-sided figure as one of these three, then you would say that it is simply an ordinary quadrilateral. One of the key characteristics about the kite is that there are no parallel pairs. Now, there is something else beyond that. We'll get into that in a moment. Trapezoids have exactly one pair of parallel sides, and a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. Let's first discuss kites. The key characteristic for kites, other than not having any sides that are parallel, is that it has two pairs of congruent sides. And those two sides, they are going to be consecutive or adjacent to one another. So you're not going to have a situation where this one and this one are congruent. That just doesn't happen for a kite. Therefore, we're going to state that those sides have to be right next to each other. In fact, they would have to form an angle, so that would be one and that would be one pair as well. Now the trapezoid, on the other hand, does have one pair of parallel sides. And this is just one such example. All you need to have is one pair. It doesn't matter how many sides are congruent. You could have two sides congruent. You could have even three of them congruent. But it won't be equilateral. Here's another example. And another. Lastly, we're going to talk about parallelograms. The main characteristic for a parallelogram is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. And there are several characteristics, actually, that can be used to define a parallelogram. But for this situation, we'll just simply refer to the sides being parallel. Here's an example. Identify the type of, parallel, or identify the type of quadrilateral that this figure is. You will note that there are two consecutive 90 degree angles, so you might be seeing this C shape. What that means is that since both of these angles are 90 degrees, they add up to 180. So what you have are same side interior angles that are supplementary. That makes the left and the right sides parallel. So we're really looking at a trapezoid. All right, let's look at another. Let's look at this four-sided figure. You will note that none of the sides are parallel. We do have one pair, though, of sides that are congruent, but we don't have a second. Because of that, we couldn't say that it's a kite. So if it's none of these three, you would simply call it an ordinary quadrilateral. Therefore, again, if it's not classified as one of, the respe one of these three special types, we would just simply say it's ordinary. Be careful not to call it a regular quadrilateral. Being regular is different than ordinary. The term regular means that a figure has all equal sides and all equal angles. Let's say that we know a figure is a kite, and we're given this situation. Determine the value of x. Now, because it's a kite, you know that you have two pairs of congruent sides. since these two are already marked. They're, that means that these two should automatically be congruent as well. And since those two sides are equal to one another, you write an equation with both expressions on opposite sides. So the 9x minus 2 is equal to 34. Uh, the rest from here is just simply algebra. You'll minus 2 from both sides, and then divide 9 to get your solution. If you wanted to check that, you can just simply take your answer, which is 4, and plug it into x to see if this entire side ends up equaling 34. All right, one more. Determine the perimeter of this parallelogram. Now, it is a parallelogram, meaning that the opposite sides are parallel. But there's also one other feature that we haven't talked about, and that is this. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, we also know that the opposite sides, in addition to being parallel, are congruent to one another, which basically means that the left side 
and the right side are both 42. And the top side and the bottom side are equal to one another. Since our concern is for x, we're only going to focus on this top side and on this bottom side. Since they're equal to one another, this is how we start. And again, just as before, we would just simply use algebra to polish this off. Now, here's the thing. Once you've solved, a lot of students will think, well, okay, three is our answer, we're done. But they're neglecting that you're not asked to determine the value of x. You want the perimeter, which means that we're going to have to figure out the length of all four sides and then add them together. Again, we already know that the right-hand side here is 42. We need to determine the top and the bottom, so since they're equal, what we're going to do is we're going to take our solution for x, which is 3, and plug in to either the top or the bottom. Let's try the, uh, the top here, or sorry, the, the bottom. So we'll plug 3 into there, so it'll be 2 times 3 plus 17. Subbing in 3 there gives us 23, 2 times 3 plus 17. That makes the top side 23 as well. So now that we have all four sides, we can now add up every single number. So the left and right side, 42 and 42, plus the top and bottom side, 23 and 23, gives us 130. And that does it for this one. Okay, now let's look at parallelograms. When you have two pairs of uh, s parallel sides, you have uh, just basically an ordinary parallelogram, but we also have parallelograms that, be that can be categorized into different types. You have rectangles, rhombuses, or rhombi, and squares. Here are the basic categorizations for the rectangle and the rhombus. Almost everyone knows that a rectangle has opposite sides that are congruent and that they have right angles. But in geometry, all we need to say is that they are parallelograms that are equiangular. So this is the key feature for it. The opposite sides are parallel. Therefore, by definition, they have congruent sides that are opposite. But we also state that all the angles are equal, all angles, of course, being 90 degrees. It is a rhombus if you get what uh, often is referred to in elementary school as a diamond shape. All the sides have to be the same length. So if it's equilateral, you have a rhombus. And please don't say diamond. You say rhombus, you sound more intelligent. If both characteristics are true, then we would state that it's a square. Again, when a figure is both equilateral and equiangular, we say the figure is regular. Please don't confuse that with being ordinary. Regular actually means something special. It's just we simply use the word regular to denote that. What kind of quadrilateral is this one? Well, you'll note that already we, we can tell that it's a parallelogram. The left and right sides are parallel, top and bottom are as well. Now the question is, is it a certain type of parallelogram? Well, we also happen to know something about its angles. All the angles are congruent. Since it's equiangular, we say that it is a rectangle. Even though it looks square-shaped, we don't have any information that tells us that all the sides are congruent, which is a prerequisite for squares. So rectangle is the best definition that we can use for this. Here's another. Again, we know the opposite sides are parallel, but we don't have any information that tells us anything about the angles being congruent, nor do we know if all the sides are congruent. Therefore, you would just state that it is a parallelogram. Okay, one last example. Let's say that you are told ahead of time that a figure is a rhombus. Determine the values of x and y. First thing you should consider is, since it's a rhombus, what are they really telling you? What they're really telling you is this. The idea of a rhombus being equilateral, meaning that every single side is congruent. Therefore, you see this value 20 here, you can simply state that all the sides are 20. Therefore, 5x is equal to 20, which means x is equal to 4. It also means that 20 is equal to 3x plus 2, which means after you subtract 2 from both sides and divide by 3, 
y is equal to 6. Okay, so let's summarize. There are essentially four types of quadrilaterals. You have kites, trapezoids, and parallelograms. And if it's not one of these three, you would just simply state that it's just an ordinary quadrilateral. So that goes into the category of others. Again, kites don't have any parallel sides, no matter how they are drawn. The key characteristic for them is that, in addition to being convex, they have two pairs of congruent sides, and they have to be consecutive, so they're not opposite one another, like they are for a parallelogram. For a trapezoid, the only prerequisite is that you have one pair of parallel sides, and only one. As for parallelograms, they can also be subcategorized. You can have rectangles, rhombuses, or rhombi, squares, and then if it's not one of these three, you would just simply state that it's an ordinary parallelogram. So, other than that, that's really how we categorize four-sided figures. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.